By avoiding common mistakes and leveraging quality software, you can save both time and money at tax time. So let's explore the seven major mistakes to steer clear when filing your rental property tax return. Number one, not claiming depreciation. So depreciation is one of the top tax benefits of real estate uh, investing. Uh, and so you'd think that most investors would know it's an absolute must on their tax return. Depreciation allows investors to deduct the value of the property over what the IRS deems its useful lifetime, which is typically 27 and a half years for residential rentals and 39 years for commercial property. This deduction accounts for wear and tear uh, and the, the gradual sort of deterioration of the property overall. It's often called a phantom expense because you don't have to spend any additional money uh, once you've brought the property uh, and uh, you can typically receive this deduction on an annual basis. It can equal actually thousands of dollars or even tens of thousands of dollars a year. Yet despite this, many investors forget or leave this deduction out on their tax return entirely. Depreciation should be claimed on line 18 of the Schedule E tax form. If that box is empty, you're doing something wrong. Number two, not allocating land value correctly. Following on for that previous point, the next tax mistake landlords often make is not correctly allocating the value of their land when they claim their depreciation expense. So what do we mean by allocating a value to the land? Well, when you purchase a rental property, you are purchasing the building, the building's contents and the land that the building sits on. Each of these things have a value. However, when it comes to depreciation, only the building and the contents itself can actually depreciate in the eyes of the IRS. So when it comes to calculating the value of your annual depreciation amount, uh, incorrectly alloc allocating the value of the land will mean claiming an incorrect depreciation amount overall. This could leave you thousands of dollars out of pocket or worse, open you up to an IRS audit. To get the land value, you need to pull uh, the property tax card from the tax assessor's database. And this is relatively easy to do. Just type into Google your country, real estate records, etc., and that should take you to the right page that you need. You'll then want to search for your rental property's address and pull the property tax card to provide the assessed value of the land uh, and improvements. Number three, deducting monthly escrow payments. Now, when you close on a mortgage, your lender may set part of your monthly loan payment to be deposited into an escrow account. This will be used to cover some of the costs associated with home ownership, such as real estate taxes, insurance premiums, and private mortgage insurance as well. Don't make the mistake of deducting the escrow portion, the insurance and property taxes each month as you, as you pay your mortgage bill. Only the mortgage interest is deductible. The escrow amount itself is not. Number four, thinking you need an LLC or worse, an escort. Whilst there are some pros in setting up an LLC, such as providing additional protection for rentals, it's not necessarily uh, if you want to deduct expenses, for instance. And in places like California, it can actually come with significant costs. Whether or not you set up as a business entity for your rental properties or uh, your rental management expenses, they're still counted as business expenses and are deducted uh, at the end of the year. Don't make the mistake of thinking that an entity will make your business any more legitimate than it would be otherwise. Congrats, you made it halfway through the video. Coming up next are the three more really important mistakes that you're not gonna want to make as a real estate investor, so stick around. Plus, I've thrown in a little bonus hack at the end of the video that's gonna make it a lot easier to avoid all these mistakes, so stick around for that. But first, like the video and comment down below what you think of these questions so far. Um, or, or these stats and if you have any questions about real estate investing uh, or taxes in, in general drop a comment in the video below now number five deducting non-allowable travel expenses travel and mileage can add up to a pretty significant deduction but not every travel expense is deductible 
And travel deductions are one of the most closely scrutinized tax deductions by the IRS. So you really wanna get this one right. If you wanna claim travel expenses, you will need to keep a detailed record of all the travel done with software like Landlord Studio. And this includes mileage, dates, time, the purpose of the travel. Uh, it should all really just cover everything that needs to be covered uh, from that travel log uh, in the case of an IRS audit. An example of allowable travel deduction might be driving to your rental property or even flying to your rental property for a routine inspection if it's out of state. An example of a non-allowable deduction would be the costs associated with exploration or expansion. These kind of speculative travel expenses are not deductible until you actually purchase a property within the same geographic area. Now you might think this is unfair, but if this rule wasn't in place, everyone could write off their travel expenses for their annual vacations uh, and all those sorts of diff different types of travels that you might want to do by claiming that they were just exploring potential investment opportunities. The IRS was unsurprisingly pretty quick to close that loophole. Number six, not using a home office. Now, a home office offers several tax advantages, yet not everyone has it set up. First of all, it allows you to deduct a portion of your home living expenses. Now, if the office takes up 10% of your house, you can actually deduct 10% off things like interest, mortgage, uh, internet, etc. But that's not even the main tax advantage. Without a home office, your transportation costs to and from your rental properties are not deductible. Uh, the IRS deems these transportation costs as a personal commute. But when you add in a home office, all of a sudden you are transporting from a place of your business to a place of your business, meaning it's a deductible business trip. Now, number seven, not advertising the property for rent the day that you close. If you don't advertise your property for rent, you fail to place the property into service. You might ask, what's the big deal? Well, before you place the property into service, any repairs or maintenance that you undertake can't actually be deducted for that tax year. Instead, they get added to the property's cost basis and will need to be deducted over the useful life of the property. This means you lose the flexibility of being able to decide which expenses are capital expenses and which aren't, and they can be deducted in the full uh, in that year. And seeing as we've rather get the deduction benefit immediately rather than over 27 and a half years, this can be a problem as well. If however you advertise immediately, you won't need to capitalize every single expense that you have, just the ones that are deemed improvements for the property. Painting is a good example. This is considered a maintenance expense for the rental properties and is immediately deductible. But if you paint before putting the property in service, the cost of the painting, the property will need to be depreciated over 27 and a half years. Now here's a bonus one, not using property management software. To avoid making costly errors and getting the most out of your real estate tax benefits, you need to be using the best systems in place so that you can track income and expenses, run financial reports, and keep an accurate, audit-proof, detailed copy of all your records. There are plenty of ways to do this, but the easiest by far is to utilize purpose-like software, purpose-built software like Landlord Studio. Now, with Landlord Studio, you can scan receipts with your phone to digitize them, store them, uh, organize them online uh, securely. You can use the GPS mileage tracker for tracking travel expenses. That's gonna keep you a full detailed log. Our automatic bank feeds feature will dramatically reduce any manual data entry uh, so you don't need to import bank statements, etc. And plus, you can generate over 15 financial reports that are accountant and CPA approved uh, for fast financial insights and a streamlined tax season. Learn more about how Landlord Studio can help you maximize your rental property ROI and simplify tax season at landlordstudio.com. That's landlordstudio.com. So if you enjoyed this video, then click the like button below, subscribe to our channel, uh, go and watch that and uh, look at the rest of our videos uh, on uh, our feed here. Until next time, we'll see you then.